Good morning. I'm Susan Pertnoy here with Barbara Kay. Welcome to Mosaic, Jewish Federation of Palm Beach County's weekly news magazine show. We're now in our 40th season. Mosaic explores Jewish issues here in the Palm Beaches and around the world. The term branding has become a hot topic in recent years for businesses and organizations. But what about the branding of Judaism? You know, today we're talking with a marketing icon who left the business world to focus on rebranding Judaism for future generations. We'll be right back with Mosaic after this brief commercial break. If it wasn't for the financial assistance, I couldn't come here. Every little bit helps. She says, I get stronger every day. When you have a child and you want the absolute best for them, it's twice as important to make the community strong. Our lives are made of memories. But when those memories start to fade, your happiness shouldn't follow. At Morse Life's Memory Care Residences, your loved one is safe and secure with the very best care from our staff who are specially trained to work with memory loss. The greatest luxury of all is the peace of mind that awaits at the gold standard memory care residences at Morse Life. Find the life you love again. Secure your lease today. The Memory Care Residences at Morse Life. We're here today with Archie Gottesman, the co-founder of Jew Belong. Welcome to Mosaic, Archie. Thank you very much. You have a fascinating story of what led you to do, to work on this website and create it with your co-founder. Can you please tell us the story? Yes. Um, so it really started a long time ago um, because I needed it. I married um, my husband, Gary. We were just married 25 years. I uh, grew up and was Methodist. And when we fell in love, it, Judaism was very important to me. And Gary converted because I said I wouldn't marry him if he didn't. But anyway, because it was very important to me and he was fine with that. Okay, which was great and that was, um, lots of conversion stories are very complicated. Gary's wasn't, he just, we started leading this Jewish life. But what happened was, it's more than just becoming Jewish, it's sort of, I was very interested and, and honestly not very happy with what Judaism looked like to Gary. So we would go to a, let's say a synagogue or something and it was like really boring or really like tons and tons of Hebrew and I don't speak Hebrew and I was like, oh, that wasn't a good one. We'll go to another synagogue. We'll try another one. So here I was trying to make Judaism better for this man who I loved and I really said, I thought to myself, you know, Judaism's brand is not as good as it should be. So I started collecting um, what I felt were beautiful readings and rituals and incorporated those into our lives. So at the beginning, it was just nice readings for Shabbat. And after we had um, children and were doing our own Passover seders, we had really, I would scour the internet and look at all these books and just find great stuff that we would have a really, really fun Passover. and. I created a sort of a spiritual, um, lots of spiritual Jewish resources that, that we used. Fast forward, oh, and people would come to my house sometimes for Shabbat dinner, because I love giving, I love having Shabbat dinners. And they'd be like, I love that stuff that we did for Shabbat dinner. Can you, can you make me a copy or can you email it to me? Or, and I was like, sure. So I was always giving my stuff away. So when I um, changed careers a few years ago, I decided, made up the name Jew Belong because it's a, about belonging and put it out there to see that, because other people see who is interested in this phenomenon of trying to rebrand Judaism and make it more welcoming. And it seems there's a lot of people who kind of were dealing with the same issues uh, that I was and lots of people who want Judaism to be more loving and welcoming. Talking about branding, you mm -hmm. talk to audiences about the fact that you, a wise rabbi once told you that right. Judaism <laughs> is a great product, but their branding sucks. Oh. Can you talk about that? Yes, and he's such a rabbi. This is like a, a, a charismatic, amazing rabbi. He's in, he's in Manhattan, and um, 
he is also sort of trying to engage people who might who feel disengaged from Judaism. And I was kind of like complaining to him one day. I'm like, it's so hard because I know so many people who are Jewish, but they don't do anything Jewish. And they don't really consider themselves Jewish. And he goes, I know, Archie. Judaism is a great product, but the marketing sucks. And I'm like, exactly. <laughs> I'm like, why is that? And he said, this is very interesting. He said that Judaism is a religion that we don't proselytize. Jews, it's not really our, our, our gig. Mormons proselytize, but Jews don't. So we actually are not very good about talking about why the religion is... So beautiful. Exactly. We don't, we've never done it before. So like, it's just not in our DNA to kind of brag about it a little and say, this is really a fabulous... Um, Way of life. I exactly. Say. We have good values. It has family and community. But, you know, you say to someone, why do you want to be Jew? Like, going back to when Gary, you know, he said, well, why do you want me to be Jewish? And I, I, I kind of, I hardly knew how to answer, except, well, I really want you to be, and I want our kids to be Jewish. That's not really an answer. An answer right. enough. I wanted right. it to be more. So that's my, um, I'm still friends with, with um, Rabbi Shiner, his name is, and he, we, you know, email all the time because he's doing his thing, and he reads Jubilong, and, you know, really trying to make it So how do better. you brand Judaism? Uh, mostly by saying to people that they are not alone in thinking that Judaism is a tricky, um, a tricky religion. We, there are, we have a word called Jubarisment, and that is whenever we made it up, made up the word Jubarisment, and which means that there's something Jewish that you know, I don't know, and you probably keep, you're like a better Jew than I am because maybe you keep a kosher home and maybe I don't, or maybe you, who the heck knows? Like you do more Jewish than I do in a sort of a, a better way. And so I'm jew barrist if I don't know, if I don't do it quite as good as you. And there's so many ways. Um, and the truth is, just because someone is more observant doesn't mean they're a better Jew. Of course. But somehow or another, Jews tend to think that way. We tend to sort of, you know, say, well, Orthodox is better than conservative, and conservative is better than reform, and that's just silly. But there is kind of an uh, intimidation. This is an intimidation aspect. factor. So um, by, by really talking about it, just putting it out there and saying, hey, there's this word, Jubarisment. Someone's like, I've been feeling that forever, but I didn't know there was a word for it. It's like, oh yeah, it's this word, and then and it's just, and for people to um, to really make it okay for people to not only say what works for them and doesn't work for them, but to also to to say that a lot of the the laws and sort of halacha it, it, there can be flexibility in it and. That's important. It is important. Mm -hmm. And we'll be right back with more with Archie Gottesman after this brief message. Coming up, more with marketing icon Archie Gottesman on how she's reshaping the brand of Judaism. Take part in an innovative, thought-provoking book and author series Jewish Federation's Conversations with Jewish Women Writers offers a unique opportunity to experience an intimate discussion with authors of new books. Learn more and register at jewishpalmbeach.org slash conversations. The tower at Morse Life has standards so high, we had to invent them. Call home a luxury rental community with a full continuum of unmatched high quality care at your doorstep and a rich, fulfilling lifestyle catered for you. Enjoy every day with a full menu of activities and five-star services. Elevate your thinking about how you deserve to live now and all the beautiful extras that are yours at the Levin Tower at Morse Life. It just feels like home. Secure your lease today. Jody Cantor's Pulitzer Prize winning journalism broke the story of Harvey Weinstein and sparked the Me Too movement. 
Join dedicated women to hear Jody's incredible and brave story at Jewish Federation's Lion of Judah Luncheon. This is Jewish Federation's flagship event for philanthropic women in our community. The luncheon is on Monday, February 4th at 11 a.m. at the Kravis Center for the Performing Arts. Learn more and RSVP today at jewishpalmbeach.org slash lionluncheon. If it wasn't for the financial assistance, I couldn't come here. Every little bit helps. She says, I get stronger every day. When you have a child and you want the absolute best for them, it's twice as important to make the community strong. We're back talking with Archie Gottesman about Jewish branding and Jew Belong, her website. So I want to ask you, what are some of the biggest flaws about Jewish branding? Um, that it takes itself very, very seriously, that it's not always, um, it doesn't look at the, at the market and say, let's, we're, we are a, we are something that people need to be attracted to. They say someone's Jewish, so of course they will um, uh, pay attention to it. And the truth is people are very busy. And if Judaism doesn't make itself um, interesting or loving or important, people will be like, well, I have other things to do. I believe everybody craves meaning in their lives, but if they're not gonna get it from a Jewish practice, then they're gonna go get it from yoga, yoga, soul cycle, CrossFit. Other places are sort of offering spiritual sustenance. Judaism has fabulous spiritual sustenance, but we don't take, um, we don't always lead with that. We lead with something that can be more complicated. Um, I have some samples I would, so, and also how things look. And I think that this may um, sound superficial to some people, but people care what, things look like. So if you're going to make a Jewish piece, it should look chic. It should look fun. It should look like everything, you know, I want to buy cool stuff. I want to, I want to buy things. Well, Jubilong happens to be free, but the way things look really matters. And so when we do Jubilong, this is our Shabbat book. It says after the week you've had, uh, you'll need this. And this is free. It's on our website. All you have to do is print it. Although I printed this one at Staples because I wanted nicer paper. But like, we really care about things. We, we, we pay attention to what the font looks like. We pay attention to all our illustrations. We, um, it, it needs to be up to snuff with everything else. It's a, it is a, um, why am I forgetting the word? It's a product. It's a product. Well, and it Judy can be treated, treated a like a product. Look at how pretty our Haggadah cover is. That's beautiful. Yeah. It and really like, is. again, all you do is print it. You go to the website and you print it. And there's a picture of our Seder plate. And everything, um, we want it to be attractive. And that matters. So how do you reach out to these people, how, the disenfranchised Jewish mm. person? How okay. do you go about that? Um, well, there we have the website and we do advertising and we the advertising that we do we try to be very funny about it using the word um uh Jubarist a lot um saying we have a very funny one that is a little girl in front of it's a meme which is basically uh kind of a poster and this little girl is standing in front of a burning house and she has this like evil look on her face and it said and it says um Next time, don't ask me to do the four questions <laughs> because I had like severe four question anxiety when I was growing up and my kids did too. So I always think like, oh, it's just so rough on these little kids having to recite the four questions in Hebrew. So we make fun of it. And we've had so much feedback from that when people are like, oh my gosh, I didn't realize I was the only one who hated doing the four questions. What's up with that? I'm like, yeah, honey, you're not alone. Lots. Of Some people love it, but just kind of pulling back the covers and saying, look at all these things about uh, Judaism that are, um, that we can kind of laugh at. One of our um, other funny ones, which as a, I think it's funny, it has a picture of a scale 
and it says, at least you can wear your skinny jeans on Thursday. And we ran it when Yom Kippur was on a Wednesday. Oh, that's very funny. <laughs> because sometimes I'm sitting in synagogue on Yom Kippur being like, oh, God, I'm so hungry. This is so boring. You know? And I'm like, oh, at least I'll, like, when I weigh myself tomorrow, my, my weight will be down. So we just, just said something like that. And that was like, it's, it's a little insidey. Not everyone gets every joke, but that's okay. We're not... Um, it's, you're not force feeding. You're not force feeding. And, and that's another thing about Jubilong. There are people who are far more traditional than Jubilong is. Um, and they're not it. They would say, but I like everything in, in Hebrew and I really like the old songs and I love. That's not your audience. Perfect. And I was like, go with God. Like, that is lovely. Like, do what you want to do. Jubilong is not forcing itself on anybody. That is not my audience. But for the people who are many times thinking, well, I'm not going to do anything, or maybe I'll do a little bit something, Jubilong is, is for them. And to tell you the truth, a lot of the times the people who are doing a lot more Judaism, sort of what I would call more traditional, love it because they maybe have someone at their Shabbat dinner at their Seder table who isn't traditional and very observant, and they want to also um, make sure that person has a great time so they're like I loved your stuff it was great my my son's girlfriend's not Jewish and she came to Seder and she really loved it I used your Jubilong uh oh, it's Haggadah. really great material it's great material and so lots of people love so it. so where do you place these ads or these slogans so that people will know to come to your website that's good that's kind of the that's the the sort of the t what is the ten thousand dollar question or the million dollar question is Finding disengaged Jews is not easy because they don't raise their hands. They're not a group where you say, oh, let's advertise to them. So the way that internet advertising works is you, you um, it's very complicated, lots of algorithms, but basically it shows up in people's feeds and uh, people who may be sort of maybe in a geographic area, in an age group, have similar uh, reading habits, shopping habits, and then it shows up in their, in their feeds. And that's how lots of people though, um, see Jubilong and they say, well, that's not either I love it and I want to send it to some friends or they s send it on to other people and say, you should sign up for this. It's m my thing, but it should be, you know, you might like it too. We need to take one final break. Sure. We'll be right back with the remainder of our program after this brief message. Coming up, more with marketing icon Archie Gottesman and how she's reshaping, literally, the brand of Judaism. If it wasn't for the financial assistance, I couldn't come here. Every little bit helps. She says, I get stronger every day. When you have a child and you want the absolute best for them, it's twice as important to make the community strong. Take part in an innovative, thought-provoking book and author series. Jewish Federation's Conversations with Jewish Women Writers offers a unique opportunity to experience an intimate discussion with authors of new books. Learn more and register at jewishpalmbeach.org slash conversations. The tower at Morse Life has standards so high, we had to invent them. Call home a luxury rental community with a full continuum of unmatched high quality care at your doorstep and a rich, fulfilling lifestyle catered for you. Enjoy every day with a full menu of activities and five-star services. Elevate your thinking about how you deserve to live now and all the beautiful extras that are yours at the Levin Tower at Morse Life. It just feels like home. Secure your lease today. Jody Cantor's Pulitzer Prize-winning journalism broke the story of Harvey Weinstein and sparked the Me Too movement. Join dedicated women to hear Jody's incredible and brave story at Jewish Federation's Lion of Judah Luncheon. This is Jewish Federation's flagship event for philanthropic women in our community. 
The luncheon is on Monday, February 4th at 11 a.m. at the Kravis Center for the Performing Arts. Learn more and RSVP today at jewishpalmbeach.org slash lion luncheon. We're back with Archie Gottesman. You encourage people to do Judaism their way. Do you fear that doing so would sacrifice certain values or components of the Jewish faith? So I don't, and I'm going to explain what I mean about doing Judaism their way. There are thousands and thousands of people who are Jewish, they identify as Jewish, and they don't do any Jewish. They don't join synagogues, they maybe might go to a holiday if somebody asks them, but they don't own it and they don't practice it. So um, I know that Jew Belong is not an end. It's not a, it's not the only Jewish there is. Judaism happens to be a communal religion, and it's also so much about Judaism is done, um, it's, it's just done with other people. Like, you know, traditionally you need 10 people for a minion, and there's a, you know, if someone dies, there's a whole community that comes to Shiva and like more. And so I realized that Judaism, it's not an individual thing, it's a group thing. However, if someone wants to start something Jewish or just wants to add to a Jewish practice that they just don't feel has the spark they want it, Jubilong is there. And I, I hesitate to say it's better than nothing, but I'm going to say that it is, it's a lot better than nothing because it's fun and it's interesting. There's, um, as in, I love skits. I think skits are the, <laughs> the way to lead people to enjoyment because if you get everyone a part in a skit, everybody participates. And there are Shabbat skits. So if someone Give says, us well, an example. Um, it, there's a Shabbat skit about the cold lasagna, and the mother says to her family, we're doing Shabbat tonight, and everyone complains, and then God comes down, he's in the skit, and he says, we're doing your Shabbat because your mother wants to, and stop complaining, and you're all staying for Shabbat. That's kind of the, the entire, that's the skit. But the thing is, is that if, um, so a skit is not a, t a typical part of Shabbat. Wine, candles, and challah are. But if it's a little more fun and it adds a little interest and it's something people are all thinking about anyway, which is like, oh, I wanted to go out with my friends tonight, my mom's making me do Shabbat, then like talk about it and add to it. And I think um, it's funny. I have a sister who's, who's really observed. She's modern Orthodox. And she's one of Jubilong's biggest fans because she reads everything I send and she's constantly sending me information because to her, Judaism is a, you know, it's a, it's a evolving, a huge way of life, but exactly, she gets it. I mean, um, all the reports, so many people who are born Jewish just don't identify anymore. So, you know, it, it's, it really is, um, it's important and it's like we need to act like important to really be reaching out. So Jubilong is doing that. And it opens the door for further exploration. Exactly. So. And I'm not, and if someone wants to say, I want to do Shabbat just like my grandmother did, I was like, again, go for it, do it. But if someone says, I really have to go out tonight, uh, but I'll make mozi and I'll do it over a pretzel. And I say, great, because there's no Shabbat police who are going to come say, ah, you don't, you know, we're going to give you a ticket because you right. didn't have a challah. You made mozi, you lit the candles, you blessed your kids the way that you did it, and you do something. And you that do a is beautiful important. blessing over the kids. I love our blessing over the kids. It's one of my very favorites. My middle daughter, uh, Sophie, is a typical middle daughter. She was about five years old. And I was doing this blessing for the, Gary and I were blessing the girls. We have three daughters every Friday. And usually people are like, are we hungry? Or, you know, I'm hungry, can we hurry up? Or can we do the fast kiddish instead of this, the longer kiddish? And, Everyone's all of a sudden right. starving every time you start Shabbat, <laughs> like they haven't eaten for a week. Anyway, Sophie and her older sister got in a fight, and Sophie ended up running upstairs and missing um, Shabbat, just the, the ritual. And it was only the five of us having dinner that night. And, you know, it ruins dinner. So she's upstairs. We kept going, but everybody felt bad because Lily and Sophie had, had a fight, and the parents were... So 10 minutes later, I go get Sophie upstairs, and I said, Sophie, please come down for dinner. You can have the chair you wanted to sit in or something ridiculous like that. And Sophie, I had never even known if she even heard the blessing or cared about the blessing. She's crying. She's still sniffling at the top of the stairs. And she's like, 
but I missed my blessing. Oh, oh. that's and I <laughs> made me start to cry. Wow. So I, of course, I hug her and I give her her blessing. So you just it never, works. you never know what's seeping in their brains, and with that is the energy at which I try to give everything. You just don't know. People don't always say, "Wow, that meant a lot to me," but it may have. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. What do you think about how intermarriage has affected our Jewish community? Mm. So as I said, um, uh, Gary was, is Jewish, and I think when someone converts, um, they're Jewish. So, but I, as someone who really thought about that a lot, and I have, as I said, I have three daughters, none are married yet, and, but so many of my friends, um, the whole world is dealing with intermarriage. I think we should say to everyone who marries um, someone who is not Jewish, who is sort of the not Jewish person, sort of taking part in the Jewish life. I want to thank them. I want to hug them. I want to say thank you. Thank you for coming to Shabbat. Thank you for doing Passover. Thank you for sending your kids to the JCC Nursery School. Thank them. I mean, like it is like, sometimes I think like, Wow, I married this guy who didn't grow up Jewish. As far as I'm concerned, I'm like, where's my, where's my trophy? I had a friend who right. once, she, her husband's not Jewish, but we both have very active Jewish life. Um, I have a daughter in the Israeli army. I mean, we have a very, and she and I were kind of commiserating. We're like, why didn't we get a big trophy? Because as far as I'm concerned, we've added to the, um, to the, to the, You're right. to the Jews. And instead, so many times people are a little nasty. They're like, oh, you know, like, like there's this weird um, stigma. Yeah, it's and terrible. a little snobbery. Yet sometimes when people are Jewish and they're with someone who's Jewish and they don't do anything, like they have no Jewish practice, they still act like, well, we're both Jewish. So I was like, it, it's, it's a little crazy. There's some very sort of odd Jewish snobbery. And I think as far as I'm concerned, if people allow Judaism into their lives and want to um, bring it into the lives of their children, I am for it. And I think that we need to be really, really welcoming. That is gonna, that's the future. The math tells the truth. Yes, it, it really does. It really does. And your website is really very helpful and I really recommend everybody go to jubelong.com. Thank you so much for joining us. We're out of time. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. Mosaic is brought to you by these generous sponsors and underwriters. Learn how you can support Mosaic by visiting jewishpalmbeach.org slash mosaic.